Hello, and welcome to the College of DuPage Writing, Reading, and Speech Assistance video workshop on creating effective business presentations. I have a passion for communication. I have an undergrad degree in communication, a graduate degree in marketing, 30 years of experience in corporate marketing and communications. I've been a speech coach, a writing coach. I love to write and give talks as a hobby, so I love communication. But even more so, I have a passion for food. <laughs> I love to eat. And I think we probably all like to eat, but I've been told by multiple people that they love to cook for me because I am the most appreciative eater they know. And I do enjoy a well-prepared meal. That doesn't need to be fancy, just delicious. But while I enjoy others cooking for me, I also enjoy cooking for myself, and subsequently others. My goal is not necessarily to prepare food that's fancy, just delicious. And to that end, I have found that there are three basic elements involved in creating a delicious dish. First, ingredients. Get the best, or do the best with what you have. Next, use a recipe. Follow a logical order. Get the right components in the right amounts. Finally, preparation. If you are ill-prepared or not paying attention, you could burn your dish, simply overcook it, leaving it dry and tasteless, or undercook it, and that's no good either. But if you make it just right, you'll leave your guests wanting more. Of course, I realize this is a workshop about creating effective business presentations. Am I mentioning food because I'm hungry? Perhaps. But you can use the same basic formula of creating a memorable dish to create an effective business presentation. Your ingredients are the contents of the presentation. Get the best you can, or do the best with what you're given. The recipe is the outline. Create a logical order, including just the right amounts of each component. And preparation is the execution of the presentation. If you don't pay attention to this piece of the project, you could wind up with a presentation that is too dry, or not cooked enough. But if you add just the right amount of sizzle, you will leave your audience hungry for more. Are you a little nervous about speaking in front of others? Everyone is. I am. It's okay and natural to feel a little bit of anxiety. Breathe deep and do your best. If you are well prepared, you'll feel more confident in dealing with whatever circumstances are present. We have an entire workshop video dedicated to the fear of public speaking. If this applies to you, please check that out. Now, understand you don't need to be a good speaker to have a good presentation with an impact to your audience. And just being a good speaker isn't enough either. You need to be prepared, organized, and rehearsed. So, how can you create an effective business presentation? Well, start with content, your ingredients. You gather data. What are you supposed to talk about? Where are you going to get the supporting data that you need? Who said it or wrote it? You need to research, verify, fact check, and cite your sources. For example, for this presentation, I researched several sources on presentation skills, past presentations I've given, examples from my own experience, and feedback provided by instructors at COD. If you're working on a team, and many times we are, you need to clearly define who is responsible for what, avoid duplicating efforts, and ensure that nothing is missed or forgotten. Know your audience. I may make an awesome pork tenderloin, and I do. But if my audience is vegan, it's not going to matter how good a cut of meat it is or how well prepared, they're not going to like it. Who is your audience? Are they peers, upper management, clients, prospects, co-workers? What are their expectations? Should you provide materials, handouts, notes, examples? Should you be following a consistent theme? Is everything about horse racing or baseball? Are there things that you should not be disclosing, like insider information to clients or prospects? Also, consider the use of industry or company lingo, common acronyms that might be perfect for an internal meeting, but they might be confusing for an external one. And consider dress code. Is it formal, business casual, very casual? When in doubt, overdress. And while you want to be engaging, certain presentation skills taught in general public speaking courses may not apply in the business setting. Humor, personal stories, shocking visuals may not be appropriate. Consider logistics. What time of day is your presentation? Are you the last presentation before lunch, when everyone is edgy and hungry and ready for you to be done? Are you the first presentation after lunch, when everyone is full and maybe ready for a nap? 
Are these the same people you present to all the time? Is it Monday morning or Friday afternoon? Also know your order or importance. Are you the keynote speaker or one in a series? Will you be presenting alone or as part of a team? Stick to the allotted time. Do not go long. Better to be a little short in a business presentation than too long. People are busy and have other things to do. And if you're one of several speakers, you don't want to take time away from someone else. Also consider the physical logistics. In today's business world, your meeting may be in person at a podium with PowerPoint projection. It might be in a conference room with handouts. It could be at a restaurant or some other public setting. It could be over the phone or the internet with no visual of you, just your disembodied voice, or some combination of all of these. Will you have access to a microphone or a screen? If you've created a wonderful PowerPoint, are people going to be able to see it? For this presentation, I knew it would be my voice over a PowerPoint video, and there would be no opportunity for interaction. Are there any cultural or international issues you need to be aware of? I've worked with teams where I'm based in Chicago, and they are in London and Mumbai, Japan and New York, even Ohio. You need to appreciate the time zone differences and the cultural customs of the various locations. And whenever possible, follow corporate standards if they exist. Use appropriate templates, colors, fonts, and logos. Consider all of your physical logistics as you prepare your presentation. But you also need to be prepared to cut to the chase. I was once in a meeting where I was allotted 30 minutes, so I prepared a 30-minute presentation. I planned out every section, rehearsed it so that I knew exactly how long each section would be. But when I got to the meeting, I was told that the group was running late, so I know they told me I'd have 30 minutes, but I only have 10 minutes. Go ahead. This is not a time to panic. It's a time to shine, because if you know your material, you hit the highlights, you skim certain sections, and you do so with confidence, leaving the audience informed and engaged. Have your elevator speech prepared. The elevator speech is that critical portion of your speech. It's, it's a summary of key points that you need to get across. It's called an elevator speech because it's the version of a longer topic condensed to the time it takes to ride an elevator, usually 30 to 60 seconds. The outline is the recipe of your presentation. In my research, I found many components of an effective presentation which I have distilled down to the following six elements. Purpose, format, data, conclusion, relevance, and summary. While there are many different and very good ways to prepare a presentation, I have found this formula to be very effective and used it to create this very presentation and you can use this formula as you prepare your own presentations. I'll cover each item one by one. The purpose just means define the task. Describe what the original problem or task is and what you've been asked to do. I said I'm here to talk about creating effective business presentations. Format means tell them what you're going to say. This is the outline or the agenda of the critical things that will be covered. I said content or ingredients outline or recipe, and execution or preparation. This, by the way, is half of my elevator speech for this presentation, the most important things to get across. Data refers to an overview of your research. Spend only the amount of time here that you absolutely need. This is like saying you need flour and eggs and milk for your recipe. You don't need to go into the exact measurements of each, just keep it at a high level. I provided a brief background on my own experience and research. Conclusion is not like the conclusion or end of a paper. Rather, this is the setup. This is where you intend to lead the audience, what you want them to conclude or deduce based on your presentation, based on your research. I said you don't have to be a good speaker to have a good presentation with an impact to your audience, and just being a good speaker isn't enough either. You need to be prepared organized and rehearsed. This is what I want you to conclude from this presentation. And this is the other half of my elevator speech. Relevance means why should the audience care? It includes your recommendations to the audience. This is the part of the presentation that your audience cares most about and you want to try to spend most of your time here. 
In this presentation, it encompasses all of the examples and details of how to create effective business presentations. Summary means to wrap up the meeting. Summarize, repeat the critical points, list any action items, and indicate what happens next and who is responsible for doing it. Also, thank your audience. It's the polite thing to do. It's also good practice to provide a succinct message that wraps up your overall message. It's the last thing you will leave with your audience, so it should be the most important thing you want them to take away. Okay, you've done all the research, gathered your data, decided the best outline to follow, and determined how much of each of your ingredients to use. Here's where it all comes together. In the execution. Your script. Write everything out. Anyway, that's what I do. I write it all out verbatim. And then I break it down into bullet points, or onto note cards, or onto paper. You can even use the notes section of your PowerPoint. And when you write it out, you want to make sure that it's easy to glance up and down and still quickly find your place. Some people use highlighters, some people use arrows, or bold, or whatever. Now, how is all of this going to come off seeming natural? Through practice. Rehearse. Rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Practice out loud, not just in your head. Actually speak the words. Rehearse with the actual script. Try to use the same equipment and room in which you are going to present, if possible. Doing all of this will help to ease speaker anxiety. Record yourself. If you don't have a camera, you can come to the Learning Commons to the Writing, Reading, and Speech Assistance area, and we can help you out there. But most people have a cell phone, and most cell phones have a video recording capability. Set it up and watch yourself. You may find that you have some nonverbal tics or mannerisms. You're rocking back and forth, your hands are in your pockets, you're scratching yourself. And once you see it in the playback, it's a lot easier to correct and stop yourself from doing it in the future. If possible, practice in front of others and get their feedback. Be sure to time yourself. When you wrote it, you thought, oh, this is only going to be about 15 minutes, but then you find out it actually took 30 minutes. Now you need to go back and cut something out. That's why you rehearse, to find out how things are really going to play out and fix them. If you're working with a group, know all of the presentation, or at least be familiar with it. I was in a group presentation once, and on the day of the presentation, one person didn't show up. My point is, be prepared for the worst case scenario. What happens if a partner doesn't show up? What happens if technology fails you, the mic doesn't work, or your PowerPoint doesn't go on the screen? How are you still going to succeed? Try to think through all of the worst possible scenarios ahead of time so that you are prepared for anything. If you're standing behind a podium, try to get out from behind the bunker. Sometimes you can't because you need the microphone and it's there. But if you can get out and walk into the audience, it's a lot more interactive. Stand up if you're in a conference room. You command more presence when you're standing and you have better control of your breathing. Also, be sure to make eye contact. Make eye contact with everyone in the room. And remember that the focus should be on you, not on the materials, not on the slides. You control the message. Now, don't read from the script verbatim, but don't be afraid to use it. Most times you won't need to memorize it. Also, practice transition between speakers when you're working with others. Rehearse how to hand off easily by having a little transition like, and now my partner is going to go into more detail about this part of the presentation. Avoid vocal fillers. Vocal fillers are um and uh and like. Become aware of these by recording yourself and watching the playback. Once you see it, once you hear it, you'll get a feel for it coming on. And instead of saying um or uh or like, you just pause and take a breath. Substitute silence instead of filling that pause with a uh or an um. Adding silence can actually make the audience pay attention, listen more closely, and anticipate what you might say next. A little bit of well-placed silence can have a powerful impact on your presentation. Be sure and check out these other writing, reading, and speech assistance area workshop videos. They are an excellent resource for oral presentations with topics such as attention getters and clinchers, creating effective visual aids, fear of public speaking, and oral citations. And there's a lot more, and we're always adding to the list. So be sure to check out the website and check out these videos.
So, to create an effective business presentation, just remember how to prepare a delicious dish. Get the right ingredients or content. Follow the recipe or outline and prepare or execute with care. Make sure you gather all the pertinent research, create a logical outline to follow, and if you're on a team, ensure that everyone knows what they are responsible for. Be ready for surprises and the need to cut to the chase. And remember to rehearse. The best way to beat speaker anxiety is to be well prepared. If you use the right amount of sizzle, you'll leave the audience hungry for more. Thank you for watching. It's usually good to end and leave time for questions and answers to ensure that the audience fully understands what you've presented and giving them the opportunity to ask more. If they do ask a question, be sure to repeat the question so that everyone hears it. But remember, you don't need to answer everything. You can say, you know what, that's a good question. I'll need to do a little more research and get back to you with an answer. Remember, you control the presentation, including the Q&A. If it starts getting out of hand, just say, these are great questions. I'll follow up and maybe schedule another meeting. And if you have any questions, please visit us at the Writing, Reading, and Speech Assistance area in the Learning Commons at COD. Again, thank you.